I have emerged from my hibernation from content creation because a article was posted this morning that I felt the need to talk about. MLB.com Seattle Mariners beat writer Daniel Kramer sat down with John Stanton to talk about various different things heading into this offseason. And anytime Emperor Palpatine of the Northwest feels the need to talk to the media, which isn't very often, unfortunately, but when he does, I feel like I need to look at it and see what he says because I usually know I'm about to be gaslit and fucked up. Over. Now, I strongly suggest that you yourself go read this article because and I'm not going to read this all to you. That's not fair to Daniel, but there are certain things that I absolutely feel like we need to talk about here. The first part talks about the dismissal of Scott Servais, which was kind of a controversial move a little bit. I mean, some people thought it was way too late to uh, get a new voice at the helm, and some people thought it wasn't necessary and a bit of a scapegoat, which I think kind of both are a little true here and there. But the main point of contention here was how Scott Surveys, after nine years with the club, found out about his dismissal, which in this case was the same way all of us did. We he found out on social media, which is absolutely terrible and not the way that things should be done. So he was asked if he knows who did it. And he stated that he is highly confident it did not come from within this building or from the ownership group. Uh, it was a very small circle of people that knew about it in the first place. And he has a high confidence that those people did not say anything. And when asked if he knew who did it he said i can't do anything about it it's in the past which is like insane and the reason that's insane is because if only a small amount of people knew about it then you have to know who leaked it i mean come on now i personally think it's total horse that he doesn't know who leaked it. I They have to at this point. On the same lines of the Scott Surveys dismissal, he was asked about the team's performance and specifically the offense as well, which was pretty historically bad. And he was quoted as saying, for whatever reason, and Jerry should answer that question, the offensive performance particularly has been disappointing. Yeah, no shit, John. It was one of the worst offenses for most of the season in almost MLB history. But one thing I want to point out in that is that he says and jerry should answer that question which i'm not saying jerry shouldn't be blamed a bit for how the offense did because ultimately he makes the roster but ultimately the buck stops with you john you are the one who controls the payroll and if i personally think if jerry had a higher payroll he'd have a bit more success in making a strong contender and this is a recurring theme over the years that jerry is kind of the scapegoat for john stanton you point to him because he's the one who makes the rosters when if he had a much bigger payroll some of these problems would have solved themselves. We wouldn't have had to ship off a Eugenio Suarez to the Diamondbacks and have him have a great year for them. Just a lot of things could have been a lot different. In regards to Jerry DePoto specifically, he was asked about DePoto's contract because uh, initially we weren't sure if he was going to be the president of baseball operations in 2025. However, we knew he had a club option and when it was announced or pretty much uh, more or less implied that he was gonna be staying for 2025, then the question came, did they invoke the clause? Did he get extended? And Stanton was asked about this and preferred not to speak on contractual details, which, uh, you know, not the biggest. I don't really give a fuck if you know, DePoto was extended or whatever, but I think it's really weird to like not mention that, especially when prior times it's been announced. So just overall, very weird to just decide to die on the hill of non-transparency. The next thing I wanted to go over was a section about a sustainable payroll. And so John was asked about the payroll issues that have pretty much plagued this team for quite a while now. And he did say, yes, we plan to increase our payroll and DePoto said just as much as well in his uh, not postseason presser his little scrum in the dugout on the last game however they made it clear that a lot of that increase in payroll is to be in-house raises because we do have plenty of uh, guys and some notable ones that are reaching different stages of arbitration most notably cal raleigh george kirby logan gilbert and randy orosarena so they're going to be getting some pretty decent bumps in pay which good for them i'm happy for them but it's kind of reading that that like when they say they're increasing the payroll 
it doesn't sound like they're saying that because, oh, we're going to go after some free agent or whatever. It sounds like they're saying that more as like a, hey, we're increasing payroll because we have arbitration. And the other thing that was noted by Kramer was that Julio's deal is going to be going from 8 million to a little over 20, which is a pretty big jump. So that's going to be a lot of it as well. So um, I, I know a lot of fans have already kind of primed themselves that to not expect us to sign any of those, you know, big free agents. This seems to imply that that's certainly not going to happen again. And it's going to be a lot more towards arbitration and stuff like that. There is one quote in this payroll section um, that really pissed me off a bit. We're roughly the 15th largest market in baseball. We're pretty much smack dab in the middle in terms of the size of the market. And that means that we're about average in our ability to generate revenue and to do those things. I think to me, the word that we use a lot in our objective is to have a sustainable franchise over a long period of time. I want to pick a specific specific part of that. We're about average in our ability to generate revenue and to do those things. John, you're bullshitting here. Per Forbes, the Seattle Mariners are ranked second in operational income in 2024, only being beaten out by the Baltimore Orioles. They raked in the second most income in 2024 in the entire league. So although yes, you are in the middle of the size of the market when it comes to the whole league, you are absolutely not about average in your ability to generate revenue. In fact, you are the second best at it. But we know that that revenue, which per Forbes was approximately $76 million, that's not gonna go towards payroll. It probably never will. Instead, we're gonna do another weird project like the parking lots outside of T-Mobile Park or the Diamond Club. Next, we're gonna get a helipad on top of the T-Mobile Park roof. It's, so it's absolutely absurd and quite literally misinformation that you are about average in your ability to generate revenue. That's just straight up false. And what's even what's even worse about it is that if you invested that in back into your payroll and got better players and started bringing October baseball to Seattle more regularly, that's just gonna jump up. You're gonna generate more revenue. So fucking stop with it. It's not an excuse at all. There is one last quote that I do want to go over that uh, circulated a lot on Twitter uh, when asking or when asked about the frustration of fans for this team missing out on the postseason again. Uh, John Stanton states, I love this place. I am present. I am here. I care deeply about this. I am as disappointed as any fan we have that this team hasn't been in the playoffs in two years. I believe we're making progress. I can certainly understand why fans are frustrated when they hear me say that, but I believe that we are on track to have a team that consistently wins over a long period of time. There's a lot going on in this quote, and I'm going to break it down because there's a few different things I want to touch on. I'm as disappointed as any fan we have that this team hasn't been in the playoffs in two years. No, you're fucking not. No, you're not. You are absolutely not as disappointed as the fans. This is still the only major league team who has not even appeared in a World Series. So stop it. You are not as disappointed. If you are disappointed, then put your money where your mouth is and prove it that you care about this team. But we don't believe it. I believe we're making progress. We won less games than we did last year and we had one of the best pitching staffs of this franchise's history and we still missed out on the playoffs. How is that making progress? We were eliminated late, earlier on in the season than we were last year. So what are you talking about we're making progress? And lastly, about having a team that consistently wins over a long period of time. Now, I'm not gonna say that that's a bad thing because, it, it, you know, yes, I understand sustainability. You don't wanna have a three-year playoff window, put all your chips in, miss out, and then have a, you know, five, six-year rebuild. This team is very clearly reached kind of it feels like it's max as far as how much it can win as of right now yes we are in the conversation the last couple years which it's nice to be in the conversation however when you miss out on the playoffs by a couple games we don't care if it's sustainable you need to get over that hump and be like the astros where you are in the championship series most years we want that that is the sustainable winning that we want we don't want sustainably winning 82 to 86 games sure you might get lucky one year or whatever but what if you don't 
that's just frustrating and ridiculous, and it's unnecessary. I intend this team to win, have a winning record every season, be in the playoffs most season, and we will win a World Series. So basically, the goal is to have a winning record. So I'm curious, is a 82 and 80 record okay to you? That's not acceptable. So pretty much just you're, you're hoping that you can like sneak in most years. This is the time, like the Houston Astros are at the weakest they've been in the past almost decade at this point. You have, you had the division title basically handed to you for most of the season, and then you, you choked it. What fans want is an ownership group and a organization who wants to take the division by the throat and be like, I own you now. I am winning the crown every single year. Mariner fans are sick and tired of waiting, John. We're done waiting and just hopefully we'll slip in and hopefully we'll go on this Cinderella run. We have never been to the World Series. We're done fucking waiting. Honestly, it, you know, when it comes to John Stanton and his interviews, I think you just have to expect, and most people know this already, you just have to kind of expect being gaslit a little bit. You have to expect some empty words because ultimately all we care about is action. And all we care about is you opening your wallet so that the guy who you have so much faith in, what you go on about in this article, can do his job to the best of his ability and let's see what happens. But I don't believe you're gonna do that sell the fucking team that's gonna be it for me i appreciate you if you watched uh sorry i haven't been making too much content recently i have a couple things that are planned uh in the next month or so that are really going to be fun and i'm excited for you to see that i'm also probably going to start writing soon which will be fun so you can look out on my twitter for that as well um if you're new to the channel subscribe it helps me out a lot i like i said i have some fun things planned in this off season you can like the video as well comment down below your opinions about john stanton i'm sure people have them that's for sure but that's gonna be it for me in this one and I will see you in the next.